is the Bay Area Southern style and a glorious day in Tampa, Florida today. And the fans are caught up in playoff atmosphere. There's a big party going on here in Tampa. And how do you like your lobster? As the NFC Divisional Playoff getting set to get underway. As the Washington Redskins take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And what a scene indeed, everyone. Welcome to Tampa. Dick Stockton with Matt Millen and Pam Oliver. And the Buccaneers who got a bye this week finished the regular season in a blaze of glory, winning eight of their last nine, including seven straight here. They have an incredibly potent defense, a rookie in Sean King at quarterback, but there's no mystery to how this team goes about their business. Yeah, there's no question. And anybody who's been a Buck fan or actually who's been an opponent of the Bucks knows the recipe never changes for them. It's what they're going to do today, no surprise. They're going to run the football. They're going to play solid defense. They're going to try to shorten the game and try to keep the ball away from that Washington offense. And then the biggest key in my mind is how the rookie, you mentioned Sean King, how he's going to handle this game. If that buck offense can get to third and short, third and manageable for King, they'll be in good shape. Now the Washington Redskins are coming off an easy win over the Detroit Lions with their high-octane offense. And uh, North Turner extremely confident coming in this game despite the doubts of Stephen Davis. The running back is going to start and could play the entire game. This team could put a lot of points, but I'll tell you, North Turner relaxed as you could want yesterday. Very relaxed and to a man, I believe, respectfully confident. They go into this game knowing that they're capable, knowing that they've played well down the stretch. And what they'll do again all comes down to Stephen Davis in that running game. Pounding inside, getting themselves some good play action pass, and then throwing for big plays down the field. But the game within the game today that I'm really looking forward to is Norv Turner, arguably one of the best play callers in the National Football League, and Monty Kiffin, the mad professor I like to call him, because you never know what he's going to do. It may look like one thing, and you heard Chris Collinsworth talk about it on the pregame show. They'll show you something, but they'll give you something else. I'm really looking forward to it. Should be a great one and a true contrast in styles. The explosive offense of the Redskins and the tremendous ferocious defense of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And the winner here will move to the NFC Championship game next Sunday. You're watching the NFC Divisional Playoffs on Fox. Fox Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Second year for the Buccaneers home and the first time they have hosted a playoff game and Sean King from St. Petersburg about 10 miles west of here and a big advantage for the Buccaneers. Teams with a bye week have a 17-1 record in the NFC and divisional games. The Bucs will get the ball first. Brett Connolly kicking off and Warwick Dunn who was installed as a kick returner the last two games of the regular season, feels this and muffs it on the 12-yard line. And Dunn will bring it out just shy of the 25. So let's uh, set the offense for Tampa Bay. Sean King, 4-1 and one as a starter, and mopped up in the victory over Seattle when Trent Dilfer got hurt the week before. Pete Pearson who hasn't started in three years is it left tackle for Paul Gruber Diaz Mayberry up front along with Middleton and Watch done and all stock contrast in styles for the running backs Jack Wes Green and Bert Emanuel are the receivers and underrated Dave Moore the tight end Tampa Bay starting from the 24 yard line and a play action pass on first down and the pass is incomplete it was intended for Green Defensively for the Redskins, and they have stepped it up lately. Up front, it's Marco Coleman, Dana Stubblefield, Dan Wilkinson, and Anthony Cook. Stubblefield and Wilkinson keys today. The linebackers are Sean Barber, Derek Smith, and Greg Jones. Champ Bailey, the rookie with a big year. At one corner, 17-year veteran Darrell Green, the other cornerback. With Sam Shade and Leamon Evans, the safeties. Dunn getting his first carry of the game for no gain. And Dick, and this sets up on the very first series what they don't want to do all game long, and that is get into third and long. They want to get into third and manageable. And the one thing about Sean King, and everybody talks about, is his poise and how unflappable he is. To me, 
he's an extension of his head coach. He's exactly like Tony Dungy. He's what Dungy likes. The interesting thing to me is something Dungy told us last night. He said, if we go into this fourth quarter down by three, 10-7, we feel like we're winning. Rarely hear that from a coach. Out of the shotgun on third down and 10. And rookie Darnell McDonald in the game at wide receiver and nearly picked off. Warwick Dunn was the intended receiver. And a way off the mark was that pass. Well, first of all, I believe Mike Shula listened to Terry Bradshaw in the pregame. They were talking about they came out and they did play action early. That ball looked like it got a little bit of a tip at the line of scrimmage. And Sean Barber almost had himself a shot at an interception. But again, it was the third and long that they want to stay out of. Three and out for the Bucks, and Mark Royals having a big year as the Bucks punter and a fine kick. Brian Mitchell at the 29 returning for the Redskins, and he has dropped before he could get underway at the 35-yard line. 48-yard kick for Mark Royal. So the Redskins with their offensive play. Brad Johnson, 3-1 and one as a starter against Tampa Bay. That is a member of the Minnesota Vikings. Kip Vickers is up front at left tackle replacing Andy Heck. Sims Raymer also up front with Trey Johnson and John Jansen. Davison centers the running backs. Westbrook and Connell the receivers. And outside Stephen Alexander. Starting from the 35 and the handoff to Stephen Davis. Didn't look very good early in the week as to whether he would play at all, and he gets about a yard. Defensively, up front, Steve White, Warren Sapp, the NFL Defensive Player of the Year, Brad Culpepper, and Chidi Ahanatu. Two pro bowlers at linebacker, Derek Brooks and Hardy Nickerson. Shelton quarrels with them. Rondi Barber and Donnie Abraham, the corners. John Lynch, he too going to the Pro Bowl with Damian Robinson, the free safety. Larry centers in motion to the left, and Brad Johnson's first pass, and that one is incomplete. Hardy Nickerson defending on the play, Alexander, the intended receiver. Dick, whenever you play this Tampa Bay defense, they do cause you some problems, but they're very, very basic. What they force you to do is be patient. Just speaking to Brad Johnson, he said, I know on the field that I'm going to be patient. This one's on Norv on the sideline. He's got to be patient over there. I'm just talking to Norv in the pregame. Remember, he said, we're still going to take our shots. Irving Fryer has come in and wide receiver. Brian Mitchell also in on passing downs. Third down and eight for Brad Johnson. And his pass up the middle is caught by Connell. And he has stopped about three yards shy of the first down. And the Redskins may have to kick. Dick, you know, this is a carbon copy first series for both teams from the defensive side. They got him into third and long, and then they play good, disciplined defense, force you to throw underneath. And unlike today's earlier game in that Miami debacle, today what you'll see is good tackling. That was the most pathetic tackling I've ever seen. And an incredible runaway 62-7 Jacksonville victory. So fourth down, and Matt Turk will punt, and Carl Williams back deep for Tampa Bay. End over end punt and fielded by Williams. And he gets tripped up and dives forward to the 27-yard line. Dan Turk made the defensive play. Each team has had the ball once. They've been three and out, and we'll be right back. This is the only game this weekend featuring a matchup of two division champions. The Buccaneers capturing the NFC Central for the first time in 18 years. That's Trey Johnson over there on the sideline. He may have gotten whacked in the eye. Got a little bit of ice in the towel there. Buccaneers starting from their 27. And Warwick Dunn. Maybe a yard, that's all. This is Warren Sapp on the previous play on that third down. And what he's going to be doing, first of all, you can notice that he's drawing a crowd. Second thing, you saw John Jansen get his left hand on him. And now, this is for later on in the game. Warren Sapp is going to go over to the official, Dick Hantak, and tell him. Just remind him that they're holding him. Didn't you see that hold? But you see the smile on his face? The respect? 
You know what that is? That's setting it up for later. Just to call it to attention because we're all human. Smart gamesmanship on the part of Warren Sapp. Second down and 10. And the handoff to Warwick Dunn. And Warwick Dunn gets close to the first down. And he, Liam on Evans, the free safety, rode the back of Dunn. And a gain of nine yards. Sometimes you're blocked. And sometimes you block yourself. And I want you to watch right here, Dan Wilkinson. What he's going to do, he's going to take that quick move, and all he did was he's created that void. And once that void is there, you better believe that Warwick Dunn's vision is going to get him to the hole. He's a scary guy, and the only really legitimate big play guy in this offense right now. Third down and one. Dunn is on the sideline, and Mike Allstott has Kevin McLeod up front blocking for him, and they give it to Allstott, and Allstott oh. may not have made it. He did not, apparently, and uh, the Redskins' defense playing a lot better lately than they did earlier in the season right there, and Dunn is on the bench right now, shaken up, and he was healthier toward the end of the year but might have gotten hit. The one thing about Warwick Dunn, he may be small in stature, but he's got a heart the size of King Kong. That's the first thing. The second thing is, he is, a, he is for me, he's a warrior. And, and he wants to play. And the one thing that bothered him, just in speaking to him this week, I want the ball. I'm a running back. I don't like to watch. I like to play. He was their leading receiver this year. And a short ski. And had uh, his second most productive game as a runner in the season finale at Chicago. So the Redskin defense stiffens. And for the second time, the Bucks will have to kick. Here's Warwick Dunn right at the end of that run that he had for about eight yards. You can see there was a little bit of a face mask there by Leomon Evans, but he also got driven to the ground. He'll be back, no problem. I don't feel a thing from up here. <laughs> no. Mark Royals kicking for the second time, and it looked, uh, Matt, as if Dunn is all right. Brian Mitchell goes back for the Redskins. And a booming kick, and a fair catch called by Mitchell back at around the 10-yard line, and this... It's the field position game when you have good kicking that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers thrive on. That was a 53-yard punt. So in Pam Oliver reports that Warwick Dunn suffered a jam neck, the back of his neck, and he will return to the game. Meanwhile, Tony Dungy has to like this field position. Redskins starting from the 11-yard line. Stephen Davis... Gets through one arm tackle and picks up one yard on the play with Nickerson and Lynch in there. What makes Stephen Davis special? Well, you hear the term all the time, downhill running. And that's what he does extremely well. And what downhill running is basically is just straight ahead. And he's powerful. Sometimes with a guy like this, you don't need a big hole. All you need is a body on a body, and he will push the crease. He does it extremely well. Playing with ankle and knee injuries. And this crowd picks up when the Redskins have the ball. It's second and eight. And again, they hand off to Davis and Tampa Bay right there. They're not letting Stephen Davis get a chance to break one. That was a gain that time of one yard. Steve White in on the play, third down. But the, this is where the patience come into play. What exactly does patience mean in a game like this? In a game like this, patience mean stick with the game plan. Stay with what the heck you came with. You know, you studied them all week long. You know their personnel. You know your personnel. You know where your matchups are. Patience then becomes execution. Redskins, 50% on third downs last week. See what they do here. And here's Thrash on the end of round. And the Tampa Bay Bucks snuffed it out. Brian Kelly, who just came into the game as a nickelback, makes the play on Thrash forcing the Redskins to punt from near the goal line. Nick, this is one of those things, and Brian Kelly does the classic job of staying at home. But this out of North Turner, as you're going to see, they're coming back on the reverse. Kelly does a phenomenal job of staying there, forcing everything back in. On North Turner's side of the ball, it was patience. He's going to stay with what he came with, and that is to give him a different look early. And a fine punt by Matt Turk that goes out of bounds inside the Bucks' 40-yard line. So you want to talk about getting out of big trouble, Matt Turk just did that for the Redskins. You know, in every play, and particularly early in the National Football League, but especially in the playoffs, all the rules are set early. 
And what the rules say is this the way it's going to be all game long. See Floyd Young, Shevin Smith right there along Curtis Buckley. Young comes in at the end just to say, hey, we're going to be here all game long. Curtis Buckley, 26, you better be ready. Buccaneers starting from the 40-yard line. Their best starting field position of the game. And Mike Allstott with a lot of power, having his best year as a rusher, over 900 yards, gets two on the play. You know, when you look at this Tampa Bay offense, to me, when I break them down, the inside three are the guys who have to play with. Well, conversely, Stubblefield and Wilkinson have got to be able to control those in inside three. Howie Long was talking about it on the pregame show, about controlling defensive tackles of both sides. These two guys right here have played well as of late, but they've got to step their game up today if they're going to control the inside running of Tampa. And Warwick Dunn, who jammed his neck, is back in the lineup for the Buccaneers on second down and eight from the 42. And the pink to Moore, the tight end, wide open. And a first down into Redskin territory. Evans made the tackle, but he is kind of a secret weapon for Tampa Bay in a game of 15. Well, what the secret weapon was was the eyes of Sean King, Dick, because they came with a blitz right into his face, and the rule is if they're coming there, somebody's got to be open. You're going to watch Sam Shade right here. Shade comes clean, and King sees it perfectly. Remember, he's not a really, he's a little vertically challenged, I might add. Not a real tall guy, but tall enough to see Dave Moore on the out. Bing. First down. And the Buccaneers on the Redskins 43-yard line. No score. Seven minutes to go in the first quarter, and Sean King is going to take off, and Barber is going to bring him down after a minimal game. Well, I think there's a valuable lesson for Sean King. Next time I'll slide. <laughs> don't, don't take him on with your head. That's the first rule. Charlie Batch up in Detroit. Yeah, he, he knows it too. He said, man, I got my bell rung on that one. I guarantee you the next time he will go feet first. You can watch him. He's kind of right in between, and you're going to lose that. And that's Sean Barber, the linebacker, and he head-to-head -head contact. You're going down. Hey, Sean King with tremendous poise. He asked him how old he is at 22. He acts like he's 32 and has been in the league for double-digit years. Second down and eight. King in the pocket, and the ball is dropped. Warwick Dunn. Ooh, that was that really was close. Set up. That was very well set up. And Frank Middleton had gotten his block on Sean Barber. And they had a lot of green out there. And with Dunn in the open field, that's scary. And again, now you get into this third and long, which they didn't want to get into. Third and manageable is what you want to try to accomplish if the offense, which is third and five or shorter. And in there, you have a lot more option with the kind of routes you run. And it also, you can get rid of the ball a lot quicker. Third down and eight at the 41-yard line. King out of the shotgun, and Carl Williams going in motion. King with pressure, and the pass thrown deep, and Jacquez Green covered by, guess who, Darrell Green in his 17th year, and up for the challenge. Well, you're not going to be able to make that throw down the field, first of all, if you don't get protection up front. And I want you to watch Warwick Dunn. Does a nice job on Sam Shade, jammed neck and all. He's able just to take him out, and that allows his throw deep down the field. A ball in which Green had himself eh, about a half a step, but Darrell Green was right on top of him. And a pooch kick by Mark Royals, and an effective one, and they'll get it inside the 10. So once again, Mark Royals does the job from his punting position, and he pins the Redskins inside their 10. We'll be right back. views courtesy of the Goodyear blimp the granddaddy of all the Goodyear blimp shots above this beautiful stadium the Redskins last possession started from the 11 they begin now from the eight yard line and Stephen Davis on the carry Davis brings it out to about the 11 or 12 yard line Brad Culpepper brings him down Tomorrow, the pregame show begins at 11.30 Eastern, 8.30 Pacific. Set your alarm clocks. It's an early game as the Minnesota Vikings tangle with the St. Louis Rams.
Yeah, and what you're going to get, some great quarterback play tomorrow. Jeff George is playing very well and taking that offense along. Kurt Warner, what more can you say? 44,000 yards, 41 passes. The MVP, they're having a phenomenal year. Stephen Davis again, and uh, it is apparent that Norv Turner looking to get the running game going before he unleashes Brad Johnson in a big way. That was a gain of two yards, and we'll bring up third down. You know, there's some nice matchups going on up front, and, and one of the best is Trey Johnson inside against Warren Sapp and, and Brad Culpepper. And those guy, that's a downhill man, 77, against a defensive tackle group that likes to move around a lot. Third down and four, and here is Johnson, and he completes the pass to Albert Connell, and a first down. So a bullet thrown by Brad Johnson as Brian Kelly and Damian Robinson make the tackle and a pickup of 11. Boy, bullet was right. Bullet was right, and again, they came with a little bit of stun up front. You can see the tackles. And ends kind of trying to cross inside, but there was time. And because of that time, watch this, zipped right in between the safety Lynch and Kelly outside. First down. Remember last week, they didn't need a lot of the weapons because it was Stephen Davis and Larry Centers in an easy win. On first down, play action. And this pass to a wide open Irving Fryer. And the 36-year-old veteran makes a 16-yard grab. And a first down at the 42-yard line. Dick, this goes back to it. Norv Turner, Turner told us in the pregame show when I was talking to him on the sideline. He said, yes, we have to be patient, but we can't not run our offense. We like to take shots down the field, and they're going to push the ball. It's not going to be all little short things underneath, 15, 18, 20 yards. Two tight ends in the game. First down from the 42. Another play action pass and a lot of time for Brad Johnson. And this pass may be intercepted. It is ruled incomplete as Irving Fryer defended downfield by John Lynch. Dick ball hung. Actually, let's twist that one around. Actually, Irving Fryer ended up defending John Lynch because Lynch did an excellent job of not taking this play fake bite. He kept his depth. You can see him right up here. And he's starting to get his depth. Now they try to put the safety there in the position to make a decision. Either jump on the underneath or stay deep. He played it perfectly. And right at the end, watch this by Fryer. Become the defender. Excellent transition game. Second down and 10. They're going to go to play action again. And the screen pass is set up to Stephen Davis. And Davis gets hit, but not before he gets the first down into Tampa Bay territory. And it's Chidi Ahanatu who gave him a shot and a gain of 15. And Ahanatu had to make that play down the field because it was a nice block by the big Trey Johnson, the Pro Bowl guard. And remember I talked about him being a downhill guy. Well, what he also does is he does a pretty good job right here. Does a pretty good job of being in space. And yes, he lost his feet, but he got his man. And just that little net nick allowed him to get the first. Redskins in Bucks territory for the first time. Davis with a good hole up the middle, and Stephen Davis picking up about five or six before undercut by Derek Brooks. And uh, remember, Norb Turner said that if Davis does not aggravate his knee or ankle injury and the ankle injury more severe at this point he would play the entire game those are his numbers thus far now he talked about at the start of the game the chess match between North Turner and Monty Kiffin right now North Turner is winning it because he has this Tampa Bay defense off balance they play of the drive from the 38 of Tampa Bay Davis diving forward short of the first down by a couple of yards. It'll bring up third and short with 150 remaining in a scoreless first quarter. What impresses me most about this Tampa Bay defense and Monty Kiffin is their patience. Because it's one thing to have to be patient for team. We're going to do the same thing. Everybody knows what you're going to do, basically. But every now and then, they'll roll the bones a little bit. And then here will come a safety. And they'll show you a blitz and pull it back. Monty Kiffin does a phenomenal job of coaching his players on the weaknesses of his defense. And they cover it well. Third down and two. And Brad Johnson goes down. He couldn't 
find a receiver, and Warren Sapp on the big sack knocks the Redskins out of field goal range. He should turn around and kiss John Lynch because that is a John Lynch sack. Excellent job by John Lynch of jumping the coverage. He's going to try to hit Sellers right away in the flat, but he couldn't get there because Lynch right here will jump this. Look, they tried to pick him, but he's right on top of it. Nowhere to go with the ball. You have to have a bite out of it, and then Sapp bites him. 12 and a half sacks in the regular season. Less than a sack away from Leroy Selman's all-time club leadership. And Matt Turk trying to keep it in play and does so effectively. We have a pair of outstanding punters here today, and they're going to mark that at the 7 when we come back. Scoreless game, 45 seconds to go in the first quarter. Think you have what it takes to be an NFL coach? Then log on to FoxSports.com or NFL.com and play Predict the Play, where you will earn points for correctly predicting the next play and compete against others in real time during today's game. That's only at FoxSports.com. Boy, football has become fun, hasn't it, for the uh, armchair guy watching the game? Football has always been fun for me. I love it, but I'll tell you this, there's some guys sitting there with their arms on the chairs right now thinking they can do better than six Ooh. punts and six possessions. Starting from the seven-yard line of the Buccaneers, first down, and the handoff to Warwick Dunn. And so far, the running game has been snuffed out by both teams. Nick, this, this Washington defense has been, all season long, they've been ridiculed. And Mike Nolan and his staff made an adjustment. And, and one of the adjustments was go back to basics and just play your gap responsibility and maintain your discipline. The ironic thing in this game is what he what he's espousing there is just what Tony Dungy does. It's the exact same thing. Just play your basics and make the other team have to come to you. Well, so far this game has been a mirror image, and that is the end of the first quarter with the score. The Redskins nothing and the Buccaneers nothing. Box NFL Sunday will continue right after these messages. Start of the second quarter, and uh, you would think it's uh, it's kind of a Tampa Bay game as both teams starting cautiously, it seems, in this game. Well, again, both teams wanted this kind of a start. You know, Tony, Dun uh, Tony Dungy told us he'd be, he's fine as long as the game can stay close. He's very happy with it. And Norv Turner told us right at the start of the game that the beginning of the game was very important. They had to be able to control line of scrimmage and come out of it nicely, and they have. Almost waiting for one break to happen to uh, open up this game. Second down and nine from the eight-yard line, and the handoff is to Dunn with a stutter step, and Dunn brings it out to about the 14-yard line, short by about four yards. Derek Smith, the middle linebacker, making the tackle. And if you notice exactly what this Washington defense is, they're shifting, and what they're trying to do is confuse you up front. You're going to watch, watch the defensive line. They wait till you get set, and at the last second they shift. And what that does is it creates sometimes quick thinking on the line of scrimmage. For the offensive men, now they have to adjust. And what you're doing there is you're, you're trying to go a little fast to make somebody make a mental error. Third and two, and Dukwe Kalu, one of the pass rushers on the nickel, coming into the game, but it's a running play to Warwick Dunn. And Sam Shade making the tackle. And it looks to be short of the first down, but we'll wait to see where they spot That'll the ball. That'll be a good spot. I, it looked, looked like he was really close on that one. You know, just going through this whole thing and looking at this game, Sam Shades made a difference with this Washington defense. And just watching the tape, it looked to me like at about the midpoint of the season is where he finally got comfortable with what he was doing in the scheme. And once he became comfortable, they became a better defense. Former Cincinnati Bengal, who has uh, come in and uh, done a tremendous job, and this defensive team may be indeed the underrated. Short of the first down by less than the length of a football, and so Mark Royals will come out, and Tony Dungy, the Buccaneers, will have to kick. Dick, if you notice what's happened, at the end of that first quarter, the Redskins got a little bit of a drive and gave themselves their field position back. And because of their last drive, that should set up decent field position now on this punt. Royals will kick from about the one-yard line, and Brian Mitchell 
poised to give the Redskins decent field position. This kick not as high, and Mitchell will have a return. And Mitchell to the 45, and a good hit, and out of bounds, but not that far from midfield. That was Don Davis, one of the outstanding special teams players, after a 50-yard kick by Royals. No score early in the second quarter, and overall, the field position battle is even, but lately, the Redskins have had the edge, and they have their best start, their own 46-yard line, first down. This entire field now being played in the shadows as the second quarter gets underway in the second play and the catch made by Michael Westbrook, his first catch of the game and a pickup of four. Let's go back to the special teams. Watch Floyd Young and Leomon Evans. That's the first one. And watch right here. Bang. McAfee by Sean Barber got waxed. Didn't it? <laughs> and that's, that's some good special teams play. In the words of Jed Clampett, woo, doggies, those boys sure can hit. Barber moving into the starting role at outside linebacker this season. Second down and six, and a fumble by Stephen Davis on a fake end around, and Davis recovers his own fumble, and Warren Sapp is shaken up for Tampa Bay. Holding his left knee. Working against Sims, nothing, 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 and then that just looks like he fell. Like Steve White just kind of pushed against him, and he well, here's the fumble. It's like Stephen Davis got out a little bit too far, but that handoff was good enough. Davis should have had that thing. So he goes out a little wide. Ah, oh, he didn't get his hands open. Hey, all of you ball carries out there, college, high school, at any level, you've got to get those elbows open so he can see the ball into his, into his stomach where he can control it. Zap comes out of the game, and Anthony McFarland, number 92, who was the first-round pick out of LSU for Tampa Bay and played well when he was used in there now. Third down and nine from the 47. Brad Johnson getting some pressure. And on the screen pass, Larry Centers driving toward the markers but will come up short. Though he does get into Buccaneer territory. And that will be Derek Brooks also heading for the Pro Bowl on the tackle. And looks like Sapp is up and yammering again. Well, he's a good yammerer, but he's an even better player. <laughs> and what he does well is he's got a great motor. Remember a year ago he said, hey, I was too fat. I was too fat, I didn't play well. He dropped himself like 40 pounds, and this year he's responded NFL Defensive Player of the Year. Carl Williams back deep, and Matt Turk will punt. Look at his chin strap. You can tell it's a kicker. And going for the block were the Buccaneers, but Turk gets it off, and Williams, in traffic, makes the grab. But once again, this game being played, it seems, inside the 10-yard line for both clubs. Field position game. Buccaneers missing Paul Gruber, the 12-year veteran, out with a broken leg. Very tough to miss the situation with the Bucks winning the division and getting the bye into the playoffs, the divisional playoffs. Team record, 183 games with the Buccaneers. Tampa Bay starting from the seven-yard line. Mike Allstott getting the gear handoff, and Allstott can't find any running room. And right now, let's check in with Pam Oliver. All right, Dick Stadium went silent there when Warren Sapp went down, but he's fine. Sapp suffered a gash in his left shin. He will not need stitches, and he will return. Back to you. All right, Pam. So Warren Sapp and Warwick Dunn, one star on each side of the ball, have been uh, sent to the sidelines with injuries thus far, but uh, both apparently responding. It'll be second down and eight from the nine. Again, there's all stop. Beautiful. And again, the Redskins are right there. No running room today for the Bucks. Did you see the shift, Dick? Yes. They shifted. They gave them one look. Then they shifted over. Part of it I talked about was maybe you make a mental mistake. The other part is to show them where the weakness is first. And then you see right here, you have a linebacker, nothing. Now you shift your defensive line over into 
an under defense, an under front, where your three defensive line are away from the tight end, you run right in it. That's good defense. This was billed as an offense versus defensive matchup. But both teams are playing extremely well defensively. John King, third down and nine. King from the goal line. And the pass incomplete and pressure put on that time by Sam Shade on a safety blitz. And that will bring up fourth down. And Nduque Kalu also in on the act. Yeah, and then they, they bring Kalu in specifically for that. Because what he does, he's a pretty good pass rusher. Came from the Philadelphia Eagles and he's beating Pearson, a spot which is normally occupied by Paul Gruber. And then on the front side, watch Sam Shade. He's a shady character. And what he did very, very well was use his own man to shade work done so he couldn't get to him. Mark Royals with the kick, and Brian Mitchell will let it bounce. And in a field position game match, you notice how the Redskins have had the edge. They're gaining ground each time and will start this series in Tampa Bay territory. That was a 35-yard kick and a little extra scrum going on. Hey, this is a great flurry of special teams play. I want you to watch Tim Denton right there and Brian Mitchell down here. The ball's loose. Denton's close. Brian Mitchell screams at him. Hot ball to get away. And at the end, Buckley comes in, and this is smart football. The whistle has not blown. Buckley has no risk. If he takes that ball and advances it and is tackled, it's where he advances. If anything happens like a fumble, doesn't matter, comes back to where it was down. Speaking of back, Warren Sapp, as Pam reported, back in its defensive tackle. First down on the 43 of the Bucks. A little razzle-dazzle by Brad Johnson and the pass to Stephen Davis. And Davis picking up only two yards after all of that. And we want to report as well that uh, Rondi Barber is uh, out for the second straight series. Brian Kelly is the other cornerback with Donnie Abraham. You see Donnie Abraham there. Remember earlier I spoke to you about you'll see good tackling. Not only good tackling, but outstanding corner play in the run game. Abraham came up, made Trey Johnson miss, and then came back and made the play. There is Barber on the sideline, second down and nine. Here is Davis, and Davis driving, flag is down. Maybe our first, and it is our first penalty of the game as Davis gets to the 39 where Derek Brooks makes the tackle. Dick Hantack indicates holding against the Redskins. Another thing that I've always enjoyed about playoff football is you get excellent officiating. And they let you play, pretty much. It's guys who, who understand the game maybe a little bit better and had excellent years. Holding. Offense. Number 63. The play ended beyond the line of scrimmage. The hole plays beyond the line of scrimmage. Eyes from the spot of the hole. Ten yards. Repeat the down. Second down. And obviously Dick Hantak's microphone breaking up and the lead blocker was Keith Sims and Donnie Abraham now being helped off. So right now the Buccaneers are without their starting corners. Well, that puts a little damper, and there's Rondé Barber yeah. comes right back so, out. No, they're not. <clears throat> you go down, I go back in. That puts the little, other back. Dick, what that does is puts a little bit of damper into the, the uh, calling of the defenses by Monty Kiffin because he likes to use, you hear about that cat blitz. That's the corner coming. Second down and 17, and the pass up the middle is caught by Connell. And a first down. Albert Connell, who has been the chief target thus far, and a little jawing going on right now between Damian Robinson and Michael Westbrook. But a 19-yard strike. And the Redskins get to the Bucks 31. What they're getting to is to the deep inside. They're going to play the, dif the discipline defense. You saw the linebacker get the deep drop. But he was able to get between, right there, the secondary and the linebackers. And because of the protection, the nice throw. Now, at the end of this play, that's just a little bit of posturing. And here's the reason why. There's nothing wrong with that kind of block. Robinson took exception to it, and they carried it a little bit extra. <laughs> and a timeout call. Brad Johnson goes to the sidelines. We are still scoreless. Cornerback Donnie Abraham, who was helped off, suffered a mild knee strain. 
and he is expected to return to the game as well so there have been some nicks on the part of the Buccaneers and they have all come back that's Rondi Barber who was out there with Brian Kelly the other cornerback Warren Sapp came out and Tony Dungy now trying to hope his defense holds Redskins are averaging over four yards on first down And we have a stoppage. Redskins calling that timeout before we are at last break. There was a foul of the game clock. The game had ceased running. That's the reason we reset at 3.33. I have a slight malfunction to the microphone used by Dick Hantak today. So, Dick, you know it's a, a slight malfunction with Kip Vickers, the left offensive tackle. And I've never seen a stance like this in my life. He has a left-handed, a left offensive tackle stance, but he puts his right hand down with his right foot up. I've never seen that before. Redskins from the 31-yard line, and the handoff to Stephen Davis, who gets a big opening. And a first down inside the Bucks' 20-yard line. Barber and Lynch, but not before Davis gets 12, and he is the kind of weapon he was during the regular season to this point. Watch Kip Vickers. Nice block right there. They came on a stunt. He washed him right down, opened it up, and then Michael Westbrook got the block that allowed him to get the first down. And again, this is that downhill style. Watch. Finish the run. Watch Michael Westbrook on Damian Robinson. They jawed earlier. He wins that match. And the Redskins trying to break the scoreless tie with under eight minutes to go in the second quarter. From the 19-yard line, Brad Johnson on the reverse screen to Alexander and the tight end picking up about four or five yards on the play with the middle linebacker, Hardy Nickerson, bringing him down. I mentioned to you earlier about Kip Vickers, that left offensive tackle who's playing for the injured Andy Heck. Very big kick. And his stance is a little unorthodox, but I spoke with Russ Grimm, the offensive line coach, and he said he's, he's comfortable with it, and I'm not going to change him. If he believes he's a better player like that, I'll let him go. He makes no mistakes. And on the other side, there's Russ, who is a great, great player. One of the smartest offensive linemen to play. He looks like a hog. He, uh, he is a hog. <laughs> Second down and six, and here is Davis showing he can still cut, and John Lynch will wrestle him out of bounds and prevent Davis from getting the first down. That'll bring up third down and about two and a half for the Redskins, who are threatening. And they're threatening because they're getting some physical play out of Kip Vickers. Look who he's working against, Warren Sapp. What he does, he washes him down completely. In this Tampa defense, they like a lot of movement. They're not real big. So they'll give you stunts in games. As an offensive lineman, you got to get your body on a body and then take them where they're going. Wash them down. Vickers, two plays, two pluses, sets up this third down. Vickers and Sapp teammates at the University of Miami. And now the Redskins will call a timeout. They don't want to do anything rash as they are in good position right now. Well, the Redskins... Uh, kind of a turbulent year, even though it was a winning year. Dan Schneider taking over as the new owner of the team. And uh, some stumbles along the way and a, a tough, demoralizing overtime loss to the Cowboys in the opening game. But Brad Johnson stayed healthy and effective. And Stephen Davis was the top rusher in the NFC. And uh, Dan Schneider giving Norm Turner, who was really a beleaguered head coach, the game ball after they clinched the... NFC East title and the Norm Turner telling us that the games against the Giants in week two and again when the team was five and four in week ten were the pivotal victories for his team. And then I also think along with pivotal victories was the way their defense came on and and they got back to basics and they started to play really well. I don't know if a light went on if they started to click they're still not overpowering but they're playing better together as a unit. And talk about uh, a team under siege. And you mentioned Mike Nolan. You know, Bill Arnsparger brought in as a defensive yes. uh, coach or consultant. Daryl Green telling us yesterday, you don't hear much about him, but behind the scenes, you know he's getting things done. Third down and two. 
from the 11-yard line, and the inside handoff to Brian Mitchell, and the Bucks stop him. Well done. Well done by the Tampa Bay defense. John Lynch was right there. Warren Sapp was also there. Just, just, just a very well-done job. Watch Brad Culpepper. Takes the inside. Now watch Lynch show up. White's right there. They're all there. That's good instincts. So the Bucks defense stiffens, and now uh, the first opportunity to break the scoreless tie. Brett Conway will attempt a 28-yard field goal. And Conway's kick is good, and the Redskins, at this point, beating the Buccaneers at their own field position game, have taken a 3-0 lead with 5.37 remaining in the first half. Dick, you know as well as I, that man right there, Tony Dungy, says three points, nothing. My team has been in close games all year long. We're comfortable with it. If we're down by seven, or if we're down by three, we believe we're ahead. Well, tomorrow we have a glittering exhibition of stars on display as the Vikings with Jeff George for the great year at quarterback, not to mention the league MVP, Kurt Warner. Smith and Falk, the great running backs. And, of course, Randy Moss, Isaac Bruce, an offensive showcase on tap tomorrow on the NFC Divisional Playoff game as the Vikings go against the Rams, who had the best record in the NFC. Pre-game show begins at 11.30 Eastern, 8.30 Pacific. Just looking at that game, you said it, offensive showpiece. But I think you also have to look at the Minnesota defense, much like this Washington Redskin defense, down the stretch, not giving up big plays, and playing better together as a unit. However, in that game, I think maybe the, the one thing that gets overlooked is the Rams defense, which is a pretty darn good unit. That one, I'm really looking forward to that game tomorrow. Conway's field goal, giving the Redskins the lead 3 to nothing. Warwick Dunn back to receive the kick. And Conway with the kick, and Dunn from the six-yard line. Warwick Dunn. And Dunn is uh, tackled at the 26-yard line by Eddie Mason. You know, in our pregame show, Howie Long was talking about the ability of these defensive tackles to control the football game. And, and I believe in Tampa, Culpepper and Sapp have been doing just that. They've been handling the middle of that defense. And in Washington, Wilkinson and Stubblefield have been doing it just as good a job over there. Sean King has completed only one pass. Warwick Dunn goes in motion to the right from the 26. And a pump fake and a pass batted in the air and incomplete. And it was Dana Stubblefield who got his uh, hand on it. Boy, and they had a matchup that they liked. They had a linebacker on Warwick Dunn. <laughs> you know, sometimes what happens when you're a defensive lineman, if you're getting blocked at the line of scrimmage, you're not getting a lot of penetration, get your hands up. Just get your hands up because you never know what you're going to take away. And what they were taking away was Greg Jones' matchup on Warwick Dunn, which had big play written all over. And the Redskins felt they would need a defensive back on Dunn out of the backfield. They did not have it there. Second down and 10 out of the shotgun. King goes underneath to all stop, and the Redskins clamp down in a hurry and a gain of about five. Derek Smith on the tackle, third down coming up. Well, Pat Hayden is the only rookie quarterback to win in the playoffs, but rookies have not done that well. One in four record. Four touchdown passes, 13 interceptions, and that is the spotlight that Sean King operates under today. Third down and five. Four wide receivers line up for the Bucks. Pressure up the middle on King. Pass caught by Dunn. And Dunn driving towards the first down and may have it. Wow. He, he does. Warwick Dunn, who is uh, shut down by Marco Coleman, and Dunn shoves back, but not before the Bucks get out of trouble and pick up a first. And Dick, not before the quarterback does all of the right things. 
Watch Sean King. He's identifying where the blitz has to come from. And he's verbally telling everyone up front what has to happen. Give your protection. Now he sees it. Sees the clock. Gets set. Makes the throw. Because what he did earlier in guiding everybody, the protection is right. And how poised he looks when you look in his eyes. First down from the 38-yard line and a play action. And King going up top for Jacquez Green. And the pass is broken up by Liam on Evans. Downfield, so the Bucks go deep on that instant. Dick, that was a wasted opportunity. And this goes back to a poor throw by the quarterback. It's wide open. This ball has to be thrown this way. Throw it out, not up. Because he threw it up, Leomon Evans is able to come back and almost make that pick. And it's a blown opportunity because there was enough field to throw it to allow Green to use his speed and make the play. Second down and 10. Here comes Evans with a blitz and the handoff to Allstock. And making the big tackle there for the Redskins was Derek Smith. Well, you said it. That was a big tackle. Because they came with the blitz, and Allstott had a, has a little bit of make you miss in there. And just that little bit of wiggle, he made a miss and came back inside. And the tackle by Smith kept them to just the four yards on five rushes. So the Buccaneers have not mustered any kind of an offense thus far. One for three on third down conversions over five, and they need nine yards right now. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers call a timeout now, their first timeout of the first half. Well, the Buccaneers setting a franchise record with 11 wins this year, stumbling in the open against the Giants. A three and four start, but Tony Dungy remained calm. Trent Dilfer broke his collarbone in the Seattle game, and Sean King, the rookie from Tulane, Led the way on a six-game winning streak as the Bucks won eight of their last nine and clinched their first NFC Central title in 18 years. And a very patient, you talk about patience being the key, this is what Tony Dungy and this team is all about. No question. You know, really, I said it earlier, I'll, I'll reiterate, this quarterback, Sean King, is really an extension of Tony Dungy. Both outstanding people. Both of them can laugh at themselves. Both of them have smiles on their faces for the most part. They always are working and looking to get better. And I, I think the world of Tony Dungy. And if I think the world of Tony Dungy, that means that I have high regard for that young quarterback. Third down and nine after the Buccaneers use up a timeout. Three to nothing, the Redskins lead. 3-0-3 remaining in the first half. Blitz now and a pass intended for the rookie Darnell McDonald on the slant. Incomplete Tim Denton on the cover. This is what the plan appears to be under defensive coordinator Mike Nolan. If they can get him into third long, they will show blitzes and they will force him to have to go to his checks because they're going to have to identify them and then go with their blitz reads. And once they do that, that time they showed it and came off it and the ball came out quick and was easily defensed. Mark Royals kicking. Brian Mitchell with a fair catch on the 12-yard line. Well, from high above, these pictures are from the Goodyear Blimp Stars and Stripes, a 75-year-old tradition for the Goodyear Blimps to make appearances at major sporting events. And today, the NFC Divisional Playoff. And it's the only game this week between teams that won their respective divisions. And Matt, I have to say right now that the Washington Redskins seem to be controlling this game, even though it is only three to nothing. Yeah, well, I think it goes back to what we saw last night when we sat and talked to a lot of them. It was it was that confidence. It was a respectful confidence. They knew that this Tampa Bay defense was good, but they also knew that they were pretty darn good as well. And we'll see how good they are starting from the 12. Brad Johnson handing off to Stephen Davis. Tested the middle and bounced away for a gain of only one. And you see who made that stop right there looking right on the top. That's John Lynch. And the reason that John Lynch is right there is because this is where you see him up here. Hey, just kind of being sneaky out there. And then he's going to shade himself up nice and slowly. Remember, when he walks down in that eight-man front, 
he becomes unaccounted for. And he becomes the free man when you can just run to the ball and make the play. And his Pro Bowl selection tells you how good he did. One of four on that defensive unit. Second down and nine. Short drop and the pass headed for the centers. Incomplete. And that'll bring up third and long. But they had right there in that formation, they had a little bit of a mismatch. Something that probably won't happen again. They had Steven Alexander, their tight end, who can flat out run, versus John Lynch, who has problems sometimes with a speed guy. Even though he's a tight end, Alexander can run. One thing you have to remember about this offense is they give you lots of different sets, and they force you to adjust to them. Third down and nine, and play fake. Connell downfield, and there he is again, Albert Connell, who has found the open spaces today, and Brad Johnson has hit him virtually every time. A gain of 23 yards, Derek Brooks, the linebacker, downfield. And the two-minute warning here in Tampa, with the Redskins leading the Bucks three to nothing. Second stats all coming up on the Visa halftime report. First down at the 36 for Brad Johnson, who's been protected well, and gets it off to Brian Mitchell, who makes a shoe top catch, but will lose about two or three yards on the play. I think I want to show you the play earlier than this, the one previous. It's how to attack this defense. Hardy Nickerson is the key. He gets deep down the middle of what's called cover two. So what Norv does is he occupies him with Michael Westbrook. And now he clears that area. And because he can clear that, Connell can come in from the backside and make a big play. Connell with four catches for 59 yards and the Redskins winning big in the total yard derby. Second and 12 from the 34 yard line. And Brad Johnson with his pass, it's caught up to the 40 by Irving Fryer, but the clock continues to run. The Redskins have one timeout remaining. Dick, it's interesting. I love good football, and this is really good football because Monty Kiffin, what he does, it's not a traditional cover two. They take their two safeties and they keep them deep, and then they run their middle linebacker, Hardy Nickerson, right down the middle, almost giving him a three deep look. You can see he's still looking at his knee. But what Norm Turner tries to do instead is he uses the defense against you. So he occupies people and then brings it in between. Five defensive backs, including Donnie Abraham for the Buccaneers. Third down and six. And a play action being chased. And Steve White on the sack, getting Brad Johnson from behind. And that is the second sack of the game for Tampa Bay. This is excellent coverage. Rondé Barber, again, this is the zone. No place to throw to the outside. Good discipline zone. And then Connell, which is, was his main receiver. Nice job by Quarles. Nickerson also right there. And because of that, as he's looking downfield, nowhere to throw, sacked by White. And the Buccaneers have called a timeout, and Steve White, who is the least noticed of a very impressive defensive front four by the Buccaneers getting the sack and the clock stops with 26 seconds to go and Warren Sapp gingerly walking to the locker room. This is the play previous working on Keith Sims and Vickers to that side. Sims does a nice job of just staying on them. And he's just he's not he's not a healthy Warren Sapp and he knows it right away. He takes himself out of the game. Earlier suffered a gash to the shin did not need any stitches, came back in, but uh, he's history for this half as Matt Turk delivers a sky-high punt and a fair catch called by Williams at the 19-yard line. Coming into the game, the ultimate in contrast of styles. Redskins with the second-best offense in the league, the Buccaneers with the third-best defense. And uh, defensively and offensively, the other way. Brad Johnson now uh, running off, and he is... Uh, oh, he's giving you that to Florida that's right. State. Florida State. He's in the right Place. shop. Yeah. Florida's, Florida's a little closer than Florida State from here. And Jacksonville's... Mm -hmm. You have to make a Louie up there, and Florida's just dead ahead. 
Earlier in the AFC, two Florida teams playing. Actually, one took down Miami, Jacksonville, in a demolishing thing. First down, Sean King. And the pass is caught to Jack West Green, stopping the clock with 13 seconds to go in the half. And the Buccaneers get out to their 41. A lot of time to throw that football. And they're only rushing three guys. You have five blocking them. And what you're, what you're guessing is that you're not going to be able to find the hole in the zone. With three rushing, that means there's eight defender. That was a nice completion, but an ugly throw. Kind of Joe Capish. Yeah. Former Minnesota Viking. Tough guy. Non-picturesque quarterback. Good pickup of the blitz and going deep for Green. And Darrell Green is there. And... The pass is ruled incomplete, so green on green again, and that was a long pass attempt by Sean King. Well, rule number one, and Darrell Green's been playing rule number one for 17 years. Don't get beat deep in a zone. You see this cushion? With that cushion, I don't care if it's Michael Johnson running out there, you're not going to get behind Darrell Green. The only thing that surprised me there is he didn't come up with an interception, and thankfully for them, he didn't, because if they did, who would play quarterback? Yeah, that's true. Since we saw... We saw Brad Johnson run into this into the locker room. Six seconds remaining in the first half. Time running out. Sean King is going to throw it up for grabs down the middle of the field. And it is incomplete. Those are one of those plays that you have to hold your breath because you never know on a deflection if one of the offensive ends pick it up. Darnell McDonald was the intended receiver. Norv Turner runs off the field with the lead, and that is the end of the first half with the score. The Redskins three, the Buccaneers nothing. Stay tuned for the Visa Halftime Report with J.B., Terry, Howie, and Chris after these messages and a word from your local Fox station. Warren Sapp and the two teams back on the field, and we get ready for the third quarter with the Redskins leading 3 to nothing. and we know that Tony Dungy said he'd be comfortable down 3 to nothing at this point. How do you look at this chess match so far, Matt? Well, it's exactly what we kind of expected when you, when you see exactly how that Tampa Bay defense has played so well. And then you look at the Tampa Bay offense, which hasn't been overpowering, and the Washington Redskins defense has been playing better. So right now, I think if you look at that, it's kind of what we expected. Maybe what we haven't expected is that Tampa Bay is is staying in third and long situations and to me that's it's kind of a surprise Buccaneers trailing three to nothing and a few moments ago Pam Oliver caught up with the, the Bucks coach Tony Dungy okay thanks a lot Dick Tony first thing Warren Sapp went into the locker room early with the sprained knee can you give me an update yeah I don't know how he's gonna be he's gonna try to go and we'll see how much it's just a pain thing he doesn't have to worry about hurting it so we'll see how do you get some offense going for the second half well we've got to convert our third downs uh, I think if we can make some third downs we'll start to run the ball a little bit better all right thanks Tony all right and there is the uh, Sean King and right now the Buccaneers are one for seven on third down conversions in the game and uh, this crowd in a festive atmosphere, the first home playoff game ever in the stadium. A couple of years ago, the Bucks beat the Detroit Lions here in the playoffs and then lost to Green Bay in the NFC Divisional Playoff the following week. Brian Mitchell back as Martin Gramatica, who has had a terrific year as a rookie but has not yet attempted an extra point or a field goal will kick off for Tampa Bay. And the second half is underway. And Brian Mitchell returning from the goal line for the Redskins. And Mitchell gets into the open field and Dramatica misses a tackle. And Mitchell still going down field and another miss. And Mitchell will go in for the touchdown. And I do not see a flag down. Brian Mitchell, who a few years ago was one of the best and kick returns brings this back 100 yards for a Redskin touchdown. And Dick, the key was his matchup on Martin Gramatica, and he didn't waste his time. And this is the style of Brian Mitchell. It's it's much like the running game of Stephen Davis. Get right up field. Nice blocks inside. Run past. Now watch him set him up. One little, and then it's power. It was nothing more than power. Watch the feet. They stay right there. One man to beat. He outruns that, and then he's in like Flint. 
Don Davis was the man who had a shot at him and uh, went after his feet. And Brian Mitchell with a 100-yard kickoff return to stun the crowd as the second half gets underway. The extra point by Conway is good. Mitchell being mobbed by his teammates. And that is a Redskins playoff record. It's an NFL playoff record for kickoff returns, and the Redskins lead 10 to nothing. Well, the whole thing starts with a wedge. You have to give your running back a chance. Nicely done inside. And then once he can spill out, you always turn one guy over to your kicker. And Brian Mitchell's style is that of straight-ahead power. Watch Martin Gramatica, the rookie kicker, gets a dose of Brian Mitchell to the kisser. Nice face, right to the face, just runs right through it. And look at the people in the background. And there's one special teamer to another. There's Turk, the punter, a very happy man. And the longest kickoff return in NFL postseason history, you remember a few years ago, Desmond Howard returned the kickoff 99 yards against the New England Patriots, and that was beaten today. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers would like to have a taste of that because they have never had a kickoff return for a touchdown in their history. And this crowd has been silenced dramatically. Brian Mitchell with the great return. And now Tony Gunji looking up at the scoreboard sees his team down by 10. Conway kicking off and Warwick Dunn from the six. Pretty fancy running by Dunn, and he runs into a Redskins sandwich. And a tackle made at the 31-yard line by Mark McMillan and Eddie Mason. You know, Dick, you're down by 10 points. They've not generated much offense, no offense, really, in the first half. And the other day, interestingly, I spoke with Tony Dunge. I said, what is it? Well, what's the point spread where you get worried? Is it 10 points? Is it 7 points? He said, no. We're all right with that. 14. That becomes a problem. They're not far away from four. They're not. Bucks beginning from the 31-yard line. Jack West Green in motion in the pitch to Warwick Dunn. Nowhere to go, and the Redskins defense inspired by that kickoff return by Mitchell and Wilkinson penetrating, got good pressure. Dan Wilkinson just overpowered the inside and took away any chance of a cutback from Warwick Dunn. Because he just used his strength right up the field. Watch him. Working on Middleton. Take him. Get rid of the block. Just overpowered him. And just work down the line. And because Cook, outside 75, took away the outside, there's nowhere to go. And North Turner told Pan that he is simply delighted with the way the defense has played thus far. That's understandable, the way they're playing. Second down and 12. Kings pass intercepted didn't know and that was Derek Smith it was thrown intended for Jack West Green and thrown behind him see he's slapping his head that's because he he was so he had drawn a bead on Green he never saw the ball and the ball actually went right through he had a chance for a pick and he knows it wasted opportunity Sean King had a wasted opportunity earlier and Derek Smith has a wasted opportunity there third down and 12 on the Tampa Bay 29. King's pass and overthrown. Darnell McDonald was the intended receiver. So uh, Sean King a little errant with the accuracy here in his first playoff game. That'll bring up fourth down. Bert Emanuel had a different idea. He believed that he was wide open. And based on the fact that there's nobody to the inside of him, he would be able to state a pretty good case. McDonald on the other side was a little upset as well. Royals with the kick. And there's Brian Mitchell this time on the punt return at the 22-yard line. And Mitchell gets hit as he crosses the 35-yard line by Fred McAfee. Timeout. The Redskins have the momentum and a 10-point lead. This Fox NFC Divisional Playoff Game is brought to you by Nextel. How business gets done. Brian 
Mitchell with his third career kickoff return for a touchdown. First down at the 37-yard line. Stephen Davis maybe a yard on first down. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers now have their starting defensive unit intact. Warren Sapp back out there. Donnie Abraham at cornerback. You know, we talked about Kip Vickers on that left side and how well he's done. But there's a rookie, John Jansen, on the other side who has had just an outstanding rookie year at offensive tackle. And I believe that's a guy who's going to anchor the right side for a long, long time. Starter from day one out of Michigan. Second down and nine, and on the slam pass, Albert Connell drops the ball. He caught four passes for 59 yards in the first half. Maybe one of the things that surprises me here through the first half is the lack of balls going to Steven Alexander into the middle and the underneath of that defense. Remember earlier we spoke about how this Tampa Bay defense plays their zone with their safeties traditionally deep and the middle linebacker Hardy Nickerson runs deep down the middle. When that does, it creates a void underneath. It's been kind of quiet for Steven Alexander. It only made one catch. Third down and nine. And this time the pass is caught by Irving Fryer, but short of the first down. And that will bring up fourth down. And the Redskins will kick. Dick, remember at the start of the game, we talked about patience. And Brad Johnson said, I know I can be patient. We'll see if Norv Turner can be patient. And I think Norv Turner has been extremely patient. He's sticking with his game plan, and it's working. Helped out by a great special teams return to give the Redskins a little uh, margin here. So it's fourth down. Matt Turk will kick, and Carl Williams is back deep for the Buccaneers. And another great kick off the foot of Turk, and it will bounce and go out of bounds and they will mark it at the wow. five yard line so Matt Turk has done his job today that was a 52 yarder and of course you see that all the time in Hawk and Dr. Pennsylvania of course Hawks hope the sun doesn't set on their playoff hopes as Sean King in the end zone on first down completes to Bert Emanuel who makes his first reception of the game. Not only did the Buccaneers get out of trouble, they bring it out to the 35-yard line. Daryl Green took a chance. Daryl Green smelled an interception. They went with the play action, but Daryl Green stayed nice and deep. And then notice the nice protection all the way around. Emmanuel's working outside. Now watch Daryl Green. He's going to see it. He's going to turn, make the break. He lost it. He thought he had a chance to go for the ball. Actually, he lost him when he spun. Longest play of the game for the Buccaneers. 30 yards, first down. And again, Sean King looking to throw. He goes underneath to Allstott and uh, holding on. And that's exactly what Derek Smith did to prevent Allstott from dragging him like he used to drag station wagons in uh, high school. One of the way he liked to push him. And that's an old way of that's an old way actually of training, and it's and it's kind of a good way, Dick, because you get into them and you lower your hips and you assimilate what you do when you're dr grinding inside. And these numbers are prior to this possession, and it's been a good one so far. I never even dragged or pushed a station wagon. So you don't I even drag know. or push your luggage anymore. <laughs> <I guess. True. laughs> Second down and eight from the 38-yard line. Warwick Dunn trying to spin away, and he can't. And a two-yard loss, and it was Marco Coleman who penetrated that time. Redskins defense playing, at this point, maybe their best game of the season. Absolutely. Remember in our pregame with Howie Long was saying that the onus of this defense was on these two defensive tackles. That's an excellent job by Dana Stubblefield. He's holding the point. And then Dan Wilkinson came off the backside and took away the cutback, which allowed Coleman to make the play. Excellent defense. Third down and eight. John King and the pass is intercepted. And it's Daryl Green who makes the interception. So Daryl Green, the only player in NFL history to intercept a pass in 17 consecutive years. And that is number six in postseason, and the Redskins get a big turnover here. Watch how Dow Green keeps everything in front of him so he can see the throw. Once there's a slip, 
That's all he needed. Darrell Green, who turns 40 years of age next month, may not be the fastest player in the league anymore. But he is the heartbeat of this defense. Steven Davis running up the middle. And uh, on first down from the Bucks' 36-yard line, hit by John Lynch. Darrell Green, with those team records, punctuated his first career playoff game with an interception off of Vince Ferragamo, and he returned at 72 yards as the Redskins won 51-7. That was back in 1983, and here he is 16 years later with another postseason pick. We saw those most interceptions, most games, most seasons, but what he has is most character, and that's what separates Darrell Green. He's, I love the guy. Oldest defensive player in the league. And meanwhile, on the pitch and on the end around, Michael Westbrook. And Westbrook is tripped up by the linebacker Shelton Quarles. And no gain on the play. And the Redskins still needing about three or four yards for the first down. Remember at the start of the game in our pregame show, Howie Long was talking about how this defense runs so well and how it's really hard to run away from him. That time, the play was perfectly set up for Michael Westbrook. Got everybody inside except for one man who ran well, Shelton Quarles. And Eric Zier is warming up on the sideline. Remember, Zier replaced Trent Dilfer. Dilfer came back, got hurt, and Sean King led the way. Third down and four on the Bucks' 30-yard line. Short drop by Brad Johnson going up top, and in the crowd, the pass is broken up, and it was intended for Westbrook with Donnie Abraham and company there. So that will bring up fourth down. That wasn't a smart play by Brad Johnson. That was one he did. Like you mentioned, he threw it up. And he, he took a chance of having an interception. That wasn't smart. Number five, Brett Conway in for the field goal attempt. Well, North Turner and, uh, started out after the interception in good field position and now calling on Brett Conway who made good on a 28-yard field goal earlier. This will be from 48 yards out. And, and, a, and a little bit of a wind blowing at him. And you can see the winds affecting that ball, but Conway makes good anyway. And the former Penn Stater with a field goal to add to the Redskins lead. <laughs> and it's 13 to nothing, and we're getting perilously close, Matt, to Tony Dungy's 14-point deficit, where he really starts to worry. Dick, I think we're already there. Thirteen to nothing, the Redskins lead on Conway's second field goal, uh, and one of the loudest crowds in an outdoor stadium in the National Football League is dead silent right now as the Redskins strike quickly, taking advantage of the turnover, the interception by Darrell Green and Warwick Dunn on the return and is dragged by James Thrash out of bounds at the 17. And uh, we told you about Darrell Green back in 83 intercepting this Vince Ferragamo pass. Well, he came into the league with all the speed and ability to play the corner and take chances. And 16 years later, he's still doing the exact same thing. Although it, the way he plays his defense actually is a little bit better in terms of discipline. Think about Darrell Green. I was talking to Trent Dilfer just the other day. He said, hey, I was watching ESPN. They were showing these old highlights. And I looked up in 1983. There was Darrell Green, and we're playing him tomorrow. And he looks like a rookie. Yeah, he's done. First down on the screen to Warwick Dunn. Tell you, you look at the weaknesses of the two teams in the classic matchup, which would be the Tampa Bay offense against the Redskins defense, and unquestionably the Redskins defense is winning that particular battle. Yes, they are. And the Redskins, part of the Redskins defense also is aided by, that guy made a great play, Derek Smith. And Warwick Dunn is shaking up. Remember at the start of the game, he had the jam net. And he still went out there and played. I want you to watch Derek Smith. They try to run a screen, and he fights through the blocker and forces this play. Now, he makes the play, not the tackle, but he makes the play. Because of Derek Smith's play, the tackle is made from the inside, right there. Here comes Cook. Here comes Coleman. And there's a collision. 
Redskins defense has smothered the Tampa Bay attack, and uh, there you see Smith being worked on by the Redskins uh, medical corps. Warwick Dunn, who has gained 15 yards on eight carries. And uh, Smith is the first man up and uh, walking off. Tomorrow, the second half of the Fox NFL Divisional Playoff, 11.30 Eastern, 8.30 Pacific for our pregame show. It'll be the Vikings and the Rams in what should be an offensive showdown in St. Louis. You see the NFL's most valuable player in Kurt Warner, but you'll also have a chance to watch the Rams' most valuable player in Marshall Falk, who, in my opinion, had just a phenomenal year. I don't believe it's any better. The season could be any better than what Marshall Falk turned in. So Dunn and Smith go to their respective sidelines. Kurt Govea back for a second tour of duty with the Redskins, who's replaced the mid-linebacker. Tampa Bay's running attack, and the North Turner said we've got to stop Dunn or Allstott, whoever is hot, neither one of them is. 19 yards combined between the two. Now you're down by two touchdowns with a young quarterback, and you heard Chris Collinsworth at halftime say he doesn't believe that the young quarterback can get that done. He may be right. Second down and 10 at the 19-yard line. On the draw, Allstott looking for running room, but... Sean Barber is right there. I tell you, the Redskin linebackers don't get much credit, but today they're playing a terrific game. And that's because, Dick, the, the interior guys have been playing very, very well. And conversely, not only are the interior tackles playing well in the defense, but the, the inside three of the Buccaneers is getting whipped. And that's what they had to have. They had to have some push against Stubblefield, Wilkinson, and they haven't been able to do it. And now the Redskins come in with their pass rushers, Kennard Lang and Dupe Kalu on third and ten. And the pass to Jack West Green, trying to wind his way to the sticks and will fall short by about three. That play is an NFC Central play Bears. stolen from Gary Croton, the same guy they said, ah, that offense will never work. But the Bears made that thing work. And this is a great league of copycats, but the, but the Redskins snuffed it. Fourth down, and so the Redskins defense stops the Buccaneers, and Brian Mitchell going back as a punt returner. Mark Royals with the pick, and Mitchell will let it bounce, and it takes a Redskin bounce toward midfield. And finally, it is down by the Buccaneers. Well, the air is out of the balloon right now for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and the Redskins own a 13 to nothing lead. Going for Connell, and the pass is intercepted. John Lynch brings the ball back to the Buccaneers, and the crowd on its feet, and it's been a while for them. They're looking for something to get into. Lynch may have given it to him. And that ball just floated out there for Brad Johnson. And we can meet Mr. Lynch because of the way this ball's thrown. Look at it. It's just hanging up there. And if you listen real close, you can hear the quack. In fact, I believe it's the quack that got Lynch over there to make that play. That's a good play by Lynch because that's one of the weaknesses of that coverage, trying to get the safety all the way over there. Lynch intercepted two passes in the regular season. Bucks get it back on their 27. to Allstott. He's not going anywhere. And once again, Dan Wilkinson leading a sea of white shirts and a loss of three yards and the crowd booing for the first time this afternoon. Wilkinson has played very, very well today. He has gotten a lot of penetration and gotten up inside and because of that, you can see what these backs have done. 23 yards, or rather, I'm sorry, 17 yards on 15 carries. Not very good. But conversely, excellent defense by that front four. You stop both of those backs, you've got a great chance to beat the Buccaneers. Second down and 12. Sean King. And a 
Great catch made by Warwick John out of the backfield. And a little applause from Sean King with a couple of defenders in his way. A gain of 16 yards. Well, the whole thing starts with protection. And Pearson, 69, does an excellent job of protecting on Coleman. Watch how he pushes him up and allows King to stay in that pocket. And then this is a matchup that you don't want to get if you're on defense. The linebacker on Warwick Dunn. Warwick Dunn is going to beat you. If he gets time and the quarterback can get him the ball, he will be open. Dunn was the leading receiver for Tampa Bay this year. Bucks with the first down on their 41, trailing 13 to nothing. King looking to go to the air again, and there's Dave Moore. The underrated tight end who found an open space and gets to the Redskins 40-yard line before Greg Jones makes the tackle. And the crowd is back, emphatically so. The crowd is back, and it all comes back to John Lynch. And again, they're well protected. Time to throw. He doesn't have to take the first read. He can come back and throw it underneath to Moore, who runs through a tackle of Gavea and picks up another first down. And the Tampa Bay Bucks are picking it up yardage-wise this quarter, and it's all inspired by the interception by John Lynch. Let's see if Tampa Bay pays it off or not. First down at the 42, plenty of time for King, and the pass was way off the mark. Champ Bailey defending Warwick Dunn, who was the intended receiver. Looks like that ball surprised him a little bit, and it had to surprise him because the Redskins took away anything down the field. They tried to look at Emmanuel deep, but he wasn't there. And he had to come off of that on that play action to try to check it down. Good job of the offensive line of protecting. They haven't gotten any push in the running game, but they've done a pretty good job of protecting King. Pivotal series for the Buccaneers. They need some points here, trailing 13 to nothing. Second down and 10. With under three minutes to go in the third quarter and a deep throw and they're going to throw the flag on Leamon Evans and down there it was Warwick Dunn so they're getting Dunn downfield that penalty is just as effective as the completion in fact a lot of times you make that throw knowing that that is a distinct possibility Leamon Evans defense number 35 first down Leamon Evans gets his shot and Warwick Dunn they're just going to turn it into just a straight speed pattern. But you can see it's an excellent call by the official. Evans lost the ball. And he tried to read Warwick Dunn, but he just ran right through him. So the Buccaneers are in the red zone for the first time in this game. Trailing 13 to nothing. They're on the 11-yard line. Sean King under pressure. And he flips it to Allstott, and Allstott diving for the end zone and appears to be out of bounds before he was able to get over the goal line. Well, you talk about a rookie under pressure. That play, Sean King bought the time. Sean King made the play with his feet. He looked downfield, wanted to go to the end zone, knew it wasn't there. Now watch him pull it down. He's going to buy a little bit of extra time, knowing that to his left, he has his outlet. Here's his outlet, and watch how he finishes. Now the Bucks can get a first down without getting a touchdown. Second down and one. And here is Allstock trying to go outside. They still haven't brought him down. He's going to score. They took everything away from all Scott at the point. Nowhere to go. But what they forgot is that all Scott is more than a power can change direction and find the end zone and he demonstrated it there and John Lynch's interception spearheaded the surge by the Buccaneers and Martin Gramatica with the extra point and the Redskins lead has been cut to 13 to 7 the turnover comes back here to haunt the Redskins and for Mike Allstott who scored all six
27 rushing touchdowns for the Buccaneers this year. This is a big six for him. Remember his signature run a few years ago in, Min in, uh, in Minnesota where he ran over a couple guys and came back. Well, this is the same kind of thing. You get hit, he keeps on going, and then what people forget is he does have the ability to redirect. He's not a straight-ahead, pure-power guy. He certainly has that, but he also has, here's the power, he also has the evasiveness to be able to outrun people. You know that the linchpin of this whole thing was this man, John Lynch, who got it started with the big interception. And that was the break that the Buccaneers needed. It got the crowd back into the game. And it got the team back in the game as well. Excellent game. And now it goes back to Norv Turner. And he has to balance between patience and conservatism because what he can't do is pull back. Monty Kiffin's defense has been very patient. Grimacing on the sidelines is North Turner. And the kickoff returned by James Thrash. And right now you're looking at an, an inspired team in red and pewter in Tampa Bay. And uh, remember when Tony Dungy said, I am comfortable being behind going into the fourth quarter of games, and he's going to get his chance. The key play was the momentum breaker, the interception by John Lynch on this pass intended for Albert Connell. And the... First turnover committed by the Redskins, and the Buccaneers came down and scored and trailed by six. Alshamon Singleton, a little banged up, looking like he's looking at that right ankle or foot. Guy out of Temple. Mike Allstott. They really bottled both he and Dunn up in the running game, but where the bottle was emptied was in the passing game to Warwick Dunn, outside. Lynch now at strong safety, and Warren Sapp trying to keep the crowd in the game. He doesn't have to try much. Man never changes. Tony Dungy is always in control. Redskins with the first down on their 22. Johnson and Connell trying to make the diving catch incomplete second down coming up let's take a look at the, what the Redskins have done in their second half possessions they have punted made good on a field goal following the interception by Darrell Green and then the interception thrown by Brad Johnson that the Bucks went in and scored don't forget they also returned the second half kickoff 100 yards, Brian Mitchell for us, TD. That's why I say with a total of nine yards there in this third quarter, you can't get conservative. Stephen Davis in motion to the right on second and 10. Johnson's pass intended for Alexander, incomplete, quarrels downfield defending. And they're starting to get a little pressure inside. Starting to get a little bit of push and making Brad Johnson get out of his comfort zone of sitting inside in that pocket. One for six for only five yards and an interception here in the second half. Third and long. Alexander goes out of the game for a third wide receiver, Irving Fry. Pressure on Johnson on third and ten. He gets hit but completes the pass to Mitchell. But he is stopped well short of the first down by this inspired Tampa Bay defense. Took everything away down the field. Got the pressure and forced him to have to dump it underneath. And then you just get to the football. It's good, solid, basic defense.
but it happens because you only have to rush four people and still get pressure as you see down here. Matt Turk will punt from the 15 yard line and Carl Williams makes the diving catch and that wind is playing havoc today and the Buccaneers will have good field position as we want to remind you that our overhead shots are courtesy of Goodyear and our blimp is the Goodyear blimp stars and stripes from Pompano Beach Florida and our thanks to the pilot and crew on board providing us with these aerial shots we saw a great sunset and now it is nighttime in the Tampa Bay area and uh, 55 seconds away from the fourth quarter with the Redskins leading 13 to 7. Well, we talked about Sean King. You can see right there, three and one. And that just goes to speak about his ability to have great points. 12 and 0 in his senior year at Tulane. From the 40 yard line, King looking to throw on first down. Moore incomplete. Good coverage, but again. The Redskins have not gotten pressure on Sean King. And Mike Shula, the offensive coordinator, in the last two series has said, okay, we're not going to run the football. Forget it. If you're going to take away the running game, we'll start throwing the ball until you have to give us coverage, and then we'll pound the football. Redskins do not have any sacks today, but their uh, team unit has played well at this point. Second and ten to the 40-yard line. Here's Allstock, head down, and uh, he gets about a yard. Third down and nine coming up. Warwick Dunn, who was on the sidelines, and as you mentioned, Matt, has been a threat as a deep pass receiver in the last series, has comes back into the game, replacing Allstock. Well, they've tried to cover him with the safety, and you saw the interference call. And they've tried to cover with the linebacker. You've seen him beat him. He creates problems, much like what happens with Marshall Falk, who he has a great amount of respect for. Yes, he does. Sean King, like Brad Johnson, has thrown one interception. Third down and eight. King stays in the pocket, and his pass to McDonald is overthrown. So a fourth down coming up. And before that, before the kick, that is the end of the third quarter with the score, the Redskins 13 and the Buccaneers 7. Fox NFL Sunday will continue right after these messages. You're watching the NFC Divisional Playoffs on Fox. We begin the fourth quarter. There has been one offensive touchdown. That's scored by the Buccaneers as... The Redskins lead 13 to 7. Fourth down and Mark Royals will kick. Brian Mitchell back deep for Washington. And a short kick and Mitchell on the run returning and a hit and down at the 28 yard line. Well the Redskins lead here by a score of 13 to 7 and uh, Tony Dungy could say we have them where we want them. We're down by six. Yeah, Maybe. but also, that's what North Turner said, too. He said, if it's close going into the fourth quarter, we're going to win this football game. Tony Dungy said the exact same thing. But I think the biggest thing is right now you have a lot of motion back into the game. Listen to it. You can hear the crowd starting to come on. This defense has started to come on for Tampa, and it's going to be a great one. I'm fired up. First down and the handoff to Stephen Davis. The Redskins have never lost after leading after three quarters in their playoff history they are 20 and 0 after leading after three quarters and man i know you were part of a lot of those games that yeah, was a big part of that thing and it was a lot of fun and it's it's fun when you start getting your good players playing well and warren Sapp is starting to tune it up a little bit down there Second down and 10, Brad Johnson taking the deep drop, setting up the screen, and the pass is caught, and a flag is down. Irving Fryer got hit by Quarles, but there is a flag down in what has been a, a game with very few penalties. Well, what's happened here, and this is going to go against Tampa Bay, but what I can see has happened here in the second half is the Tampa defensive front has picked up the pace. 
And it's given pressure now to Brad Johnson. He has not been able to push the ball down the field in the second half. Face mask call. Obviously not pleased. Tony Dungy. Buccaneers second in the NFL with the fewest penalties. Another reflection of the head coach. Mm -hmm. This is the first penalty against the Buccaneers today. It comes in the fourth quarter. Dick Hantak. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense 53. 15 yards first down. That's a big one too. <laughs> Shelton Quarles maybe after the catch by Fryer. Well, here, here's Shelton Quarles nope. right here. I think they're trying to say that that's the face mask right there on Alexander, but it looks like he missed it. 15-yard penalty marked off gives the Redskins good position now on their 46. Steven Davis is buried by Derek Brooks and a loss of two yards and one of the hardest hits we've seen today we talked about the patience that it has to come from the sideline of the offense well let's not forget the patience of the defense in Monty Kiffin and here they come and what they're bringing is a couple of run blitzes and that time was an excellent read by Derek Brooks who came saw the void and essentially a good linebacker becomes a running back he reads the same things with those eyes Ends up with a great pop. And he's headed to the Pro Bowl once again for the third straight year. So it'll be second and 12. Skip Hicks has come in at running back for the first time today for the Redskins. Hicks and Stephen Davis battled in preseason to win the job, and Davis won, and the rest is history. Play fake to Hicks. Johnson fumbles. Loose ball. Warren sacked. He's got it. And now they're pointing Washington's way. First hand tack went one way with it, and now it's the clock. I think Tampa Bay's got the ball. Warren Sapp, but not after Steve White forced the fumble. White just beat him with speed around the corner. And because they had coverage down the field, he was able to smack that ball, and the ball's out. Watch Warren Sapp. He first thought about trying to trying to be a hero, but then he thought he better just get it. Look at this. Nicely done around the corner on Vickers. Slaps it from behind, and the Bucks are back in. Sapp no, showing no ill effects of the, that injury that sent him to the locker room in the second quarter. So a first down at the 32-yard line, and now Sean King is sacked at a huge loss of uh, over 10 yards or close to it by Dana Stubblefield and that's a 10 yard setback for the Bucks. and also took him out of field goal range but they should thank Sean Barber because Sean Barber jumped the underneath coverage and he had no place to throw had to pull that ball down good coverage out in the flat and then Stubblefield's able to come off see right here this is what they're going to try to get to Barber comes over to get down in this flat no place to throw Big play by the defense coming right back after that unfortunate play for Washington on the fumble, second and 20. Design sprint out. King. Bobble and a catch. Bert Emanuel's got it. And they get a lot of those yards back. He'll be short by about four. Mark McMillan on the hit on Bert Emanuel. I was waiting for this from Mike Shula, the offensive coordinator. Move the pocket. Move the pocket, buy some time, stretch the field. When you start moving your quarterback, that really puts pressure on you defensively in your zones. And you really have to have excellent discipline. And if you don't, holes open up. Sean King took advantage of one of those holes. And the Bucks are back in field goal range. Third down and three on the 25. King, and King is going to fumble, and it's picked up by Warwick Dunn, and Dunn will have the first down for Tampa Bay on a broken play. Sean Barber forced the fumble, 
and Dunn picks it up. And a big play for Tampa Bay on third down. He was looking down the field for Yatil Green. It wasn't there. And then Daryl Green stayed on Green. No place to go with the ball. And then Sean Barber slapped the ball away. But look at the heads up play. Warwick Dunn. It was all because of the pressure, or the coverage rather, by Daryl Green on Jacquez Green that forced him to have to come back. First down, and here is Warwick Dunn trying to work his way in for tough yards. And uh, Dunn, nothing big, there. Marco Coleman on the tackle. What a big play. To, if you look back in today's game, to this point, all the big plays that's happened by this Tampa Bay offense have been Warwick Dunn. The interference call, the throw earlier right after Lynch's interception to get another first down, and that one was a monster. That was, it was a very alert play. By yeah, him. not only that, but I mean, it could have been a disaster. Balls on the ground, done because he's trailing, much like Franco Harris, just running to the football. You pick it up, good hustle, turned in a big play. And an 88-1 to one edge this half by the Buccaneers. So they have turned it around, but still trail the Redskins by six. Sean King to, guess who are done again, and done tackled close to first down yardage. Inside the 10 yard line by Derek Smith. Maybe short by a yard and shaken up early. Warwick Dunn has come back big here in the second half. Well, yesterday, as we were watching the film and we spoke with Tony Dungy, Richie Zions, our producer, said, You know what? Warwick Dunn's going to make some big plays tomorrow. And Tony Dungy agreed with him. And, and they were both right. That's Even why Richie's he... going to be an assistant coach with his team <laughs> next year. Exactly right. <laughs> Two tight ends on third and one. All stop. Very close to the sticks. And uh, the Buccaneers trying to control the ball. Warwick Dunn has come up big here in the second half. Much like Daryl Green. Man with great character. You know the story of his mother I was shot in the line of duty and he has been raising his brothers and sisters and it's not been it's not been an easy thing for him he's he's had to learn how to be a big brother and a father and a provider all at one thing and I have a great amount of respect for that man work done measuring for the first down and the Buccaneers are short by a yard it appears so it'll be fourth down and one all game long this defensive front of the Washington Redskins has taken away the run. Sean King is shaking him off, saying, let's go for it. Fourth down and one. And they're going to go for it. Now this is, this is the defining play of this game, Dick. Still plenty of time remaining. 9.15 to go. Warren Sapp looking at the crowd, not on the field. He's the maestro here. All stop. The tailback with Kevin McLeod blocking up front. And the give is to All stop. Got the first down and gets inside the five. That was good, smart offense. Nice call by Mike Shula. And George Diaz with a good block up front. You see how they tried to take away the inside? Watch the Redskins. They're going to push it right inside. Now watch. Diaz comes outside. They knew that that was going to happen. So just bounce it outside. Still use the power if you have to. But you know you have Sapp on the sideline with that defense ready to make big plays. Redskins lead by six, but that lead is in jeopardy. The Buccaneers with a first and goal on the three. In with two tight ends, and King will throw out of the tight formation, getting rushed, and very smartly throws it away. Good cover. Nice, nicely done by Derek Smith. On McLeod, trying to get out into the flat right away. Took that away. Jumped his coverage. Nothing there. He's going to try to come outside. Derek Smith read it perfectly. He'll take his coverage. Nicely done on the tight end right here. Beautifully done. Nowhere to go. Throws it into the stands. Second down and goal. And Dunn is back in a tailback. And they 
go to Warren Dunn. Dunn spins away and gets to the one-yard line. Bringing up third and goal from the one-yard line. And again, the Redskins don't let the Bucks get in there. Leomon Evans with a big play. That was big because he held on to the only thing he could, which was one leg. And limping off now is Dunn. This is several times today. The Buccaneers stars sap on the defensive side. And done on the offensive line of how to come out. Watch the spin right here. There's the spin. He comes out of it. But watch the bottom of it. Leomon Evans holding on. He's not letting that thing go. So again, it's all stopped. The tailback. McLeod, the blocking back. From the one. Third and goal. Play fake. And King touchdown to John Davis, the tight end. Phenomenal play by the rookie, Sean King, who says this game does not get bigger than me. This is why I am unflappable. I love the pressure, and there's why. He sees it. Kalu comes right to his face, and he just dumps it off, and Davis scores going away. And the score is tied, 13-13, and Martin Gramatica comes in, and a flag is down. The kick is good, but there is a penalty. And uh, John Davis, in the regular season, caught two passes, one of them for a touchdown. And he is one for one in this game. And Sean King, the rookie, with a big play, and the flag down. And apparently, it is against the Redskins. Unsportsmanlike conduct, defense leaky, leaping. 15 yards will be administered on the kickoff. So the extra point is good, and the Buccaneers lead 14 to 13. John Davis with the touchdown catch, and the two defensive aces on the sideline. Tampa Bay Buccaneers who dropped their opening home game of the year to the Giants and then reeled off seven straight, leading for the first time today on a 10-play, 68-yard drive. They have scored two touchdowns off of turnovers as John Davis catching the pass from Sean King, and now Brad Johnson and the Redskins have to go to work in what has been really a... A game of two different halves, although Brian Mitchell's kickoff return did happen here in the third quarter. Or yeah. in the third quarter. But defensively, it's been a different fuck defense in the second half. They've stuffed this Redskin offense. James Thrash and a bobble on the kickoff return, and the Redskins with Mike Sellers have to settle for possession on the 11-yard line. But you're right, Matt. Tampa Bay's defense making the big plays and an alert play by Dunn. Davis getting the touchdown. Tampa Bay by one. We'll be right back. Very good. Well, right now, the man who would be king in Tampa would be Sean King. But, you know, Warren Sapp would have to be right up there on the throne with him. He's a prince. Stephen Davis in the game and play action from the 11-yard line. And this pass caught by Davis out of the backfield. And uh, it looks like another Redskins first down. The key play set up by the defense. Steve White forces the fumble from Johnson, recovered by Sapp. Now King fumbled and an alert. Warwick Dunn scampered with the ball. On fourth and one, Mike Allstock got the necessary yardage. And then the touchdown pass to Davis and the Buccaneers, who were trailing 13 to nothing. At one point, lead by one now. Mark Dunn, that was a phenomenal play in picking up that fumble. First down at the 21, and unable to hold on to it is Alexander, and he has John Lynch all over him. He has played an exceptional game as John Lynch. He's had his coverage. He's made the interception. We've shown you how he's dropped down in the eight-man front. has been unaccounted for. He's played a whale of a football game, as has in the second half the front four. And they're starting to get pressure without any blitzes. And that makes calling defense a lot easier. Second down and 10. 
Brad Johnson. And holding on to it is Larry Centers. He hasn't done that much today. He was the focal point last week against Detroit. And four yards loss on the play. You know, I'm just watching Stephen Davis limp off the field. And let's just take a look at those feet because what you're seeing is a little bit of gingerly, gingerly steps going on out there. In fact, he's, he's hobbled right off the field. Gamely playing on an injured ankle and knee. Third down and 14. Johnson gets protection, and this pass broken up. Westbrook was the intended receiver, and Donnie Abraham was there to knock it away. And now the Tampa Bay defense playing with a lot more confidence than they did in the first half. Boy, it's like the zones have just shrunk up here in the second half. And they're able to do it again because Monty Kiffin, the defensive coordinator, is getting great pressure out of his front four. And there's no place to throw the ball back there. Fourth down, and Matt Turk shank, shanks it. And oh. Carl Williams will uh, let it bounce. And it doesn't turn out all that bad for the Redskins as it is down at the 35-yard line. They got 48 out of it. That's the guru of the Buccaneers defense, their coordinator, Monty Kiffin. Well, anytime you can get on that bus and eat the way we oh, do, tremendous. Doesn't get any better. Go coast to coast on that bus. It's better than that. I can eat from Allentown to Cleveland. Timeout called by. Wait a second. That's not that far. All right. Make it Denver. <laughs> timeout <laughs> called and uh, the Bucks with their first timeout of the second half. We'll be right back. 5:35 to go in the fourth. The Bucks lead by one. And uh, how much has John Lynch's interception? been a factor right now oh it's a it's a monster and we said it right at the time that, that could turn things around and because of the emotion of the crowd and the fiery play of the defense since that thing that play has been the pivotal play of this game Warwick Dunn is the tailback on first down from the 35 and Dunn with the handoff and picks up about two the Bucks would like to get at least three more points out of this to turn it into a four-point game because knowing their defense and knowing the attitude of Monty Kiffin, their defensive coordinator, they believe that there's no way that this Washington Redskins team is going to drive for a touchdown. Heck, they haven't done it all day. Offensively, all they've scored is six points. The other seven have come from the kickoff return. Trent Dilfer, who went down with a broken clavicle in the game at Seattle, and he has been a big supporter of Sean King. Four and one as a starter coming into this one. Second down and nine, and the handoff to Allstock. And uh, right there was Marco Coleman. And a loss on the play of the four yards. I think this is the best I've seen that front four play all season. Stubblefield's played solid inside. Dan Wilkinson's had an excellent game. Coleman's been there a bunch. They've played very good on defense. And the Buccaneers in no hurry here. You know, they'll rely on their defense. They lead by one. Tampa Bay 0 for 8 when they needed five yards or more on third down. They had 13. That goes back to what we said from the beginning. They needed to keep it third and short, five or less. And King goes underneath and the tackle. And this is where Tony Dungy didn't necessarily want to gamble for the big yardage because he is content to kick and hand it over to his defense with under four minutes to go. Well, if you step back and look at the way this game is going, the Buck defense in the first half was on their heels a little bit. Norv Turner and that offense, led by Brad Johnson, had them kind of on the ropes. But at halftime, the adjustments, uh, the biggest adjustment is just their front four turning it up. They're playing much better than they did early. And if you look at that, you've got to say that this Redskin offense hasn't done squat here in the second half. Royals punting for the 10th time, and that is a club record. Brian Mitchell back deep. And Mitchell getting set to return this kick. And a flag is down, and Mitchell hitting the ground immediately. And now another penalty marker throw. There's one all the way back. Damian Robinson and uh, James, limping. Yeah, and James Thrash, they got tangled up on the on the 
starting end of that thing. But Thrash looks the better of it right now than uh, does Damian Robinson. I couldn't tell who took the takedown. I couldn't tell if Thrash held him and slammed him or Robinson took it and, and did a, a throw himself. Goes to, it goes to uh, Damian Robinson. Almost looks like a wrestling hip toss. Right here. There's one foul on the play. Holding offense. Number 24. Mm. During the kick. There was no foul during the return. Ten-yard penalty. Retry. Fourth down. Personally, I, I think that should have gone the other way. Thrash. See, when you're rushing the punt like that and you're responsible for a man, you don't want to let him out. And so you, as you take off and you and you rush this punt, watch Damian Robinson, 24. See, Thrash has it. And he's trying to pin Robinson so he can't get down in the coverage. But they... In fact, Robinson even throws his hands up at the end. But the official throws the flag. You see that underhook there by Thrash? Actually a pretty good throw. <laughs> so now it is fourth down again, and Royals will kick. Now the Redskins are looking at the far better field position as Mitchell standing on the 30-yard line. Mike Sellers jumped. Of course, the point drill is going on inside. Keep in mind, at the 314 mark. Defense, number 45. Five-yard penalty. Still fourth down. At the 314 mark in this game, you throw it all out. All you're going to have, you have you have your timeouts. Timeouts don't really, you have to be able, you got to get some points. And the chances are you may not get the ball back again. So it'll be interesting to see if Norv Turner goes ahead and starts going to four downs. Well, it's going to be in the uh, hands of Brad Johnson when he gets back on the field as the uh, Royals finally kicks and a wobbly kick not a good one and uh, Mitchell on the 35 yard line tripped up in a fine open field tackle by Floyd Young. It's been a comeback game for the Buccaneers who were down 13 to nothing at one time and it all started right here with the interception by John Lynch and the Buccaneers scoring Mike Allstock going out of the pack and getting the touchdown. The first offensive score of the game by either team, and then the fumble caused by Steve White, recovered by Warren Sapp, and then King, before he got hit, finds John Davis, and the go-ahead score, the Bucks lead by one. With 3.05 remaining, and a first down on the 38-yard line, and the swing pass to Skip Hicks. And the second year back out of UCLA, picking up about five or six yards with Rondi Barber defending. It's been a quiet day, really, for, for the White House, but Michael Westbrook in particular, with one catch, his main role early in the game was to clear out for Connell. Second down and four. Brad Johnson's pass and deflected by Rondi Barber and uh, caught but out of bounds for an incomplete pass. Pretty good job of stepping up. They're feeling the pressure from the backside. Marcus Jones, but they just step up and make that throw. Boy, this is really well played defense. This is as good a zone defense that I have seen. And this is what the Buccaneers bring to the dance. It's not complicated. It's just well played. Third and four with under three minutes to go in the fourth. And the pass to Centers. And Larry Centers appears to have a first down, and he does. And Brad Johnson wants the team together. They want to hurry it up here, knowing that a field goal would put them in the lead again. Looks like Norv 
And the offense did take a shot down there that Barber broke up. But it looks like they're going to be patient just to move it methodically down the field. And they should. First down. Again, they swing it out to Skip Hicks. And Hicks avoids Rondy Barber and gets close to the first down. And he may have it, and he does, to the 40-yard line of Tampa Bay. The Redskins still with three timeouts remaining, and the Bucks with only two. And did you see how Skip Hicks finished that run? He got the pass, he turned the corner, got the first, and then lowered his shoulder at, at the end on Damian Robinson. Ran right by Rondé Barber, but lowered the boom on Robinson. Brett Conway, whose career-long field goal is 51 yards. That's all the Redskins need to regain the lead. Have a first down on the Bucks 40. Hand off Larry Centers and a rare running play for Centers. And he picks up nearly eight yards. That was an excellent call. And good job of anticipating what Monty Kiffin was going to do because they came on a blitz. Watch, he's coming up inside. So they're going to take this thing and run it right inside and use that blitz against them. Two-minute warning here in the fourth quarter. We'll be right back. It's nail-biting time. Two minutes to go in the fourth. The Bucks by one. And both coaches kind of anticipated this scenario down the stretch. And they both felt comfortable with a close game at the end. Both believed they could win them. Skip Hicks is the running back. Steven Davis out of there. Second down and three for Brad Johnson. And this pass thrown away. It was intended for Westbrook. And will bring up third and three. Nicely done again on the backside. Kip Vickers was beat by Stephen White. Remember earlier, White was the one that forced the fumble that turned this thing around. North Turner's record not in, at all anything to brag about in close games. Six and 17 in games decided by three points or less. Third and three coming up at the 33. Remember, this is four downs here. And the handoff to Skip Hicks, nothing there. So it'll be fourth down, and remember, Conway's career long is 51 yards and he starts to walk on. Warren Sapp made this tackle. Oh, this is a this is a tough one right here. If you if you try to go for it, miss it, you're not going to get another shot. You have to take your shot. So here is Brett Conway, who has kicked two field goals today. The first from 28 yards to give the Redskins a three to nothing lead in the second, and then a 48 yarder after Darrell Green's interception. So this is for the lead for the Redskins, and it would match his career long of 51 yards. And now the Buccaneers will try to ice Conway with a timeout. Remember, he kicked one earlier into the wind. Now he has the wind at his back. I guess after last week's uh, Tennessee Buffalo game, it's not. It doesn't matter. If Yogi it's had it right. Over, right? <laughs> it ain't over till it's over. It's been a well-played defensive game today, but both coaches believed it would be close. Both of them were comfortable with it coming down to the end. Both of them had confidence in thinking that they could win a close football game. And the winner of this game will move on to the NFC Championship game on Fox a week from tomorrow. Brad Johnson is the holder. The quarterback, Brad Johnson, is holding. This is a 51-yard attempt. Necessity that nobody went have to throw the ball and the pass is broken up It was a bad stop from center and Brad Johnson looking to throw but nobody went downfield and Dan Turk the long snapper Did not get the job done and these problems Matt started in week one against the Dallas Cowboys I mentioned nobody went when this ball is a bad call you have a hot call Brad Johnson has to yell hot, and when that happens, both the tight ends and the wings have to go out for a pass. Sellers
Sanders is the only one that went out, but it was half-hearted. He had no one else to throw the football to. These guys become eligible, as well as the tight ends inside. And the kicker, they're all eligible. No reaction. Jenkins finally goes out, but it's too late. You know, in the back of my mind, when I saw Brad Johnson, who's a normal holder, I said, maybe they'll fake this for the three yards and get the first down. So now taking over the Buccaneers and Mike Allstott turning the corner as we wind down to a minute remaining. So Dan Turk with an errant snap from center and the reaction of the Glazier family in their booth. But when you look at Dan Snyder, the owner of the Redskins, a different view and John Lynch with Trent Dilfer and the Buccaneers maintain their 14 to 13 lead with 59 seconds to go. Now this one's over. It's only Dan Turk over there and the Redskins using up their first time out. And that's Matt Turk, his brother, consoling him as the Redskins in position to take the lead. Conway attempting a 51-yard field goal, and it never got underway. Well, you never know. You never know what the heck's going to happen. This Next year? Yeah. <laughs> Ever, really. And you, boy, this year was was a humdinger, wasn't it? Yeah. But it comes down in every game situation, and it goes back to what you practice every week. And every week you practice that hot call, and every week you get out. And when it ha you never know when it's going to happen. And there it happened, and they flop. Second down and four, and they give it to Allstock. And Allstock to edges his way into Redskin territory, and the, the Redskins call their second time out. Well, uh, it's been an enjoyable year and an exciting game to uh, finish out, Matt. And uh, our crew has done a marvelous job, and I'm proud of every one of them, as I know you and Pam Oliver are. Today's game produced by Richard Zients and directed by Artie Kempner. You won't find two better. The associate director, Greg Scopatoni, the broadcast associates, Jacob Ullman, Derek Manning, and Adrian Hassenmeyer. The technical producer, Dean Walker, and his outstanding crew. The pregame show was produced by Scott Ackerson and directed by Bob Levy. The senior producer is Bill Brown, and the executive producers of Fox Sports are Ed Gorin and David Hill. And that was the third and final timeout by the Redskins. I was surprised he just didn't take a knee. This one's history. Why'd they, why would they even waste their time with attempting that there could be a fumble? Sean King will hand it off again to Allstock. Trying to stay in bounds. He does more than that. He gets the first down as well, and that's all she wrote. Tampa Bay is going to win and move on to the NFC Championship game. Well, there were so many big plays and pivotal plays that happened in this game. You think back on the Steve White sack for a fumble. The Warwick Dunn picking up of a fumble and getting a first. The critical fourth and one that Allstott picked up. Lots of big plays, but to me, the key for this game was the defense in the second half for Tampa Bay. They picked it up. And sparked by John Lynch's interception. So the game is over, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, after trailing 13 to nothing, Advance to the NFC title game with a 14 to 13 win over the Redskins. Let's go down on the field right. to Pam Oliver with John Lynn. Okay, thanks a lot, Dick. John, congratulations first. Give me your thoughts about this huge win. Uh, it was awesome. It, it, you know, you got to feel a little bit like we're destined. A bad snap there. They played a heck of a game, and we battled. And, and uh, we've come from behind earlier this year, and I think that helped us a lot. We played in a lot of close games, and I think that served us well in the fourth quarter. You were really responsible for turning the tide in this game with that pick of Brad Johnson. Talk us through that play. Uh, you know, Brad, uh, they had been hitting us with a lot of inside routes, and I had actually, they, they ran two seams, and I had actually bitten on the inside, and Brad went outside. I read his eyes and just went and got the ball a team that starts three and four heading to the nfc championship game what does that take i think it tells you we have a lot of perseverance a lot of fight in us uh, we've got a head coach who didn't give up on what we believe in and we all bought into that and we fought our we fought our way back 
and uh, you know eight of the last ten and, and to get this win it, it's just it's outstanding and, and uh, we're gonna we'll give it our best shot next week you did a great job thanks a lot let's go back up to Dick. Bucks win their eighth in a row at home and if the Rams lose tomorrow to Minnesota the NFC championship game would be right here we have more coming up from Tampa but again the final score the Bucks 14 and the Redskins 13.